uh, several missions, in fact. And uh, the main purpose of the talk is to show a new gravitational theory, uh, a complex one, with several parameters, and show how you need a variety of experiments in order to constrain uh, the theory. Okay, so the outline is uh, we'll introduce uh, uh, why we need to go beyond general relativity, uh, what kind of predictions we, we are doing with the about space-time torsion, and what constraints we get from a lunar laser ranging, from the Mercury perihelion advance, from gravity probe B, uh, and the ESA mission to Mercury Baby Colombo, and how we also increase these constraints with LEGEOS, the laser geodynamics satellite, which is complementary for some measurements to gravity probe B. Uh, and then I'll give you new prospects for uh, uh, our beloved lunar laser ranging. Okay. Um, many tests of uh, general relativity have been done with solar system experiments, in particular with uh, Mercury, the per perihelion advance, with the Moon, uh, and I will show that in, in a minute. And then the curvature of space-time has been measured with the Cassini mission to, to Saturn. Uh, it is generally not believed that uh, general relativity is the final theory of gravity, because it has unexplained singularities and because it is a classic non-quantistic theory. Um, there are many uh, activities on looking for dark matter and dark energy, uh, new, par new particle physics and new gravitational physics which are needed to make modern physics uh, uh, consistent uh, and in particular in the quantum uh, uh, regime. Um, so we need to look for new physics beyond general relativity. This is already done in the parameterized post newtonian formalism, which is a well-known formalism which was uh, um, shaped in the uh, 70s. The famous parameters alpha, beta, and gamma. Gamma is the curvature of space-time which was measured with Cassini. Uh, we are studying a model in which there is space-time torsion in addition to curvature. And there are other uh, types of theories which were famous about the moon, like uh, uh, the Valley's theory. Now, on the moon, we have nice, uh, five nice uh, arrays uh, put there by the three Apollo missions and two uh, Russian missions. We all know that. Um, at the moment, uh, because of lunar librations, current measurements which are done with the, these arrays uh, cannot be improved significantly unless we, uh, we replace the space segment, and in particular we replace uh, multi-reflector arrays with single large reflectors. So at the moment, uh, you see here a list of uh, measurements which are done um, on gravitational parameters. Um, one is the parameter beta, the other ones are about the equivalence principle, one is the uh, time variation of the gravitational constant, the inverse square law, and geodetic precession of the moon around the Earth. Now, the, now the accuracy is a few centimeters on the range. In order to improve that, uh, uh, we need uh, single large reflectors to replace the arrays because of the effect of the librations. Okay, now we are working on a theory uh, in which we study the most general mathematical connection between two points in space-time, and in the Riemann-Cartan space-time, this mathematically has both the standard curvature, which is found in nature, but also space-time torsion. So we took this approach and extended previous work by these uh, uh, people, which used uh, their model to constrain torsion with uh, the gravity probe B mission. Um, and here we consider torsion as a property of space-time that can be originated and also tested by microscopic bodies like uh, solar system bodies like the Moon, Mercury, and artificial satellites. We also consider the particular case of autoparallel trajectories. Uh, in general relativity, there can be mathematically two types of trajectory. Geodesics, which are the usual trajectories along the curvature of space-time, and autoparallel trajectories. This is the one we are considering now for torsion. Uh, and this work is described in two papers uh, shown here. Um, so the theory has several parameters. It's a complex theory. Uh, there are three parameters, T1, T2, and T3, which uh, describe additional precessions to the orbits of the Moon and Mercury. And there are five additional parameters uh, which describe additional frame dragging uh, of uh, bodies like the laser geodynamic satellites. Now, these parameters combine with the PPM parameters to describe the motion of the Moon, Mercury, uh, and uh, artificial satellites. So we have used the data from uh, uh, past and present experiments to put constraints on this, uh, 
on these parameters to see if nature has chosen to add also torsion in space-time in addition to curvature. Okay, now this is the first uh, constraint we've put. Um, we used uh, the measurement of the geodetic precession of the moon done with lunar laser ranging with 0.64% uh, accuracy and the mercury radar ranging measurements um, which have uh, uh, made possible the measurement of the mercury perihelion precession with a one per mil accuracy. And you see that uh, in this plane, uh, we put constraints on the T2 parameter and the T3 parameters. So with lunar laser range, we exclude these values of T2. Uh, and with the, the combination of the two measurements, so, uh, we exclude the, all the region outside this one labeled as uh, allowed region. So this is a constraint on the two parameters at the level of uh, uh, percent or less than a percent. Now, um, using the lunar, lunar ranging data, we can also assume another important effect, which is called the Northbet effect, in which case uh, we have that beta, which is uh, not a torsion parameter, but a PPM parameter, is then constrained whoops, at the level of uh, 10 to the minus 4, sorry. If we do that, uh, then beta minus 1 is less than 10 to the minus 4, so we can neglect it from, uh, from this uh, expression here compared to the experimental uncertainties. Then we get a limit, which is a limit on T3 and T2 without beta. Okay, now this is the new measurements which has been done by Gravity Pro B. Gravity Pro B has measured the geodetic precession with a better accuracy than lunar ranging at the moment uh, at the level of 0.28% instead of 0.64%. So this allows us to, to move this excluded region closer from here to here and then now combine the, the Moon and Mercury and GPB, uh, we get this smaller allowed region. So the, the, the range of allowed values for T T2 and T3 goes below per mil. Okay, a further improvements uh, can be achieved because uh, a new mission is, uh, has been approved uh, uh, to go to Mercury with two orbiters, and the advantage is that the geodetic precession of Mercury compared to the geodetic precession of the Moon is larger by a factor of 10, uh, and the mission has two orbiters, two orbiters around uh, Mercury, which will be tracked precisely with the radio science experiments. Uh, probably the mission will take uh, uh, several years, hopefully. Uh, so in this way, we are going to have a, a further measurement of the, the uh, perihelion precession, which is the one basically constraining the width of this allowed region. So if we can improve this by a factor of 10, we will also shrink the, the, the region both for T2 and T3 to probably 10 to minus 4. Okay? Now, it would be useful also to repeat uh, uh, Mercury radar ranging measurements uh, during the Bepi Colombo mission. These are uh, basically time of flight measurements with radio waves in which the radio waves are bounced off the planet itself. So this is a very different method because in, in one, one case you are doing this with the radio science uh, from the Earth to the orbiter. In the other case you are doing it like in the past uh, from the Earth to the planet itself. Okay. Now, uh, including LAGOS, uh, we can test also uh, other uh, uh, parameters, the frame dragging parameters. Uh, the measurement of frame dragging has been done with LAGOS and has been done recently with the Gravity Pro B. In order to, however, the two experiments are very different. Gravity Pro B measures independently the geodetic precession and the frame dragging. So you can separate very clearly the two, ex the two effects. Legios cannot, so in order to measure uh, the frame dragging with Legios, you need to subtract the effect of the geodetic precession. So you need the measurement of the geodetic precession by GPB or by uh, lunar ranging. In this sense, uh, uh, constraining torsion with Legios also requires a gravity probe B and or uh, the moon. So you can see here that uh, with Legios, you can constrain W2 minus, minus W4. With GPB, you can constrain a larger combination of uh, uh, parameters. Now, you can also do that using different orbit elements uh, of um, uh, Legios. You can use the node or you can use the perigee. If you use both node and perigee, you get another limit, which is on this combination, linear combination of parameters. So in this plane, you're going to constrain this linear combination. So in total, with frame dragging experiments, gravity probe B and Legios, you can constrain W2 minus W4, 
this combination, this combination, at the level of 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, which is a factor roughly uh, in a range between 10 and 100 worse than uh, uh, what you can do with the Moon and Mercury. So, um, direct precession has a special role because it can be measured better than uh, frame dragging and also because it is measured with three very different experimental techniques. Gravity Pro B, which is uh, superconducting gyroscopes, lunar laser ranging, and Baby Colombo, which is radio science. So in this way, if you're measuring the same effect in three different ways, you are protected against systematic errors. Now, at the moment, GPB has the best measurement of the genetic precession. However, GPB is over. There are no more data in the future. So the continuing uh, lunar ranging to the Apollo and lunar code will eventually improve the, the, the previous best measurement, 0.64%, to a value better than, than GPB. Also, especially because we have, uh, um, since uh, uh, now three, four years, uh, a high-performance uh, uh, ground station, which is Apollo, all in capital letters, uh, led by Tom Murphy, and because there is hope to have new lunar surface missions which uh, uh, can put new reflectors on, uh, on the moon. So uh, you know very well that uh, uh, there has been a large effort uh, in building a concept, uh, a scientific study for the International Lunar Network, for the a Lunar Geophysical Network, um, and this is uh, a multi-site simultaneously operating instruments for lunar science and gravitational physics. And the basic set of instruments is a seismometer, a, a lunar reflector, a thermal heat flow probe, and an EM sounder. So going from the ALSEP of the Apollo era to uh, next uh, decade, we are going to have uh, a new network of uh, instruments on the moon. So we're building it now in collaboration with the University of Maryland, a new reflector, a single large reflector for the lunar geophysical networks, which we hope to deploy in this, uh, in this decade. You see in these pictures uh, a, a drawing of the, oops, of the payload. The payload is uh, uh, thermally optimized with the inner thermal shields of, uh, of gold, like this one and this one. And it is being tested in a dedicated facility in, uh, in Italy, which uh, uh, performs a full-blown characterization of how the payload performs uh, in the space conditions uh, uh, on the moon. So this is a unique facility which we have developed over the last five years in collaboration with the University of Maryland. And in fact, we have started with uh, um, a GPS-2 uh, retroreflector flight model, which was uh, <coughs> given to us by the University of Maryland. We have tested that in Frascati. In this, uh, in this facility. This facility provides uh, the lunar environment because it provides, of course, the vacuum, uh, the dark, but also the uh, radiation spectrum of a high fidelity lunar simulator, solar simulator from, from this window. We then tested uh, a model of the laser sector of the laser satellite from Goddard, and we are now testing the lunar reflector uh, again in collaboration with Doug Curry. Okay, this is our group. It's an Italian American group, and you can see in the picture. Our PI, Doug, uh, Tom Murphy, another person working on, on uh, the uh, PEP software from CFA and MIT, and the rest of the team uh, in Frascat, Italy, which is operating the, the facility. We also had, we have an astronaut in our team, so initially when we had the manned missions on the horizon for LSSO, we were happy and proud to have uh, um, such a collaborator. Now we're going to robotic missions. So let me conclude with, uh, with this slide, which says basically that we have a facility which uh, for the uh, lunar geophysical networks will allow a complete full-blown characterization of the space behavior of uh, lunar reflectors. This is now used for GNSS, for LEGOS, but also for lunar range. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Very impressive. Uh, uh, work to both in progress and to come. So it's very exciting. Uh, questions on this talk for the speaker? What a quiet group today. All right, since we are running a little low on time,